All right, this is just a quick video reflection over using Alice. I am using version three on the Mac. Um, I understand from version two, this is a big step up, is what I've what I've heard, um, but having never used it before, I don't really have anything to compare it to. Um, compared to Scratch, using something like that, this is much better, in my opinion. I really struggled with Scratch. I didn't like how the menus worked. I didn't like how things were exposed. What I really like, though, about Alice is that you can get as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. Um, the first thing I like about it is that you've kind of got this immersive editor to set the stage for everything. You can set camera paths, you can set object paths, you can put landscapes in here, all different kinds of stuff. Uh, and the first thing I really want to point out is as I change camera angles, so I can I set this starting camera point. This is what I'm looking at. Uh, what it does is if that camera is selected, let me rotate real quick see this line it shows you what you're looking at so this is where the camera is focused and as you change each camera angle uh, it gives you a line of sight for that uh, so this this one is way up here kind of pointing down that direction so I get this entire field of view in here so that's really nice I like that a lot it helped me in my editing um, so that's that's kind of the, the editor stage uh, again really nice easy drag and drop there's a few different tools up here that you can use um, but if we jump over to the code so this is what the code block looks like. So if, again, if you've used Scratch, it's similar to Scratch, but I liked how the language is a little bit different. So instead of pairing or whatever it says in Scratch, do together. So all of these live down here at the bottom. Again, they're just drag and drop. Um, and you can set them up to do whatever you want. It starts you with your first method. But unlike Scratch, each of these, um, it, instead of having a block of motion or um, focus or whatever you know the the things are in the middle of the scratch window uh, so if I select the penguin all of my methods down here change so I can go right into and see what the orientation ones are I can see what the size ones are I don't have to dig through menus over and over so it made it much less frustrating to use because I could go through and just find the one I wanted and drag and drop the other thing I liked about Alice is that it gives you um, details so when you drop it in there you just have the default box, but then it gives you this detail one. So I can come in and I can set, all right, I want this to be a smooth path. I want it to kind of arc or do whatever. Uh, so I don't have to wonder about what's going to happen. And it, and it doesn't give me too many choices at the same time. It, it limits the choices you have. So that's really nice. Again, the code block is easy to drag and drop. Um, thinking about it in a linear fashion, so do in order. And I can come in. Um, do together is really handy. Uh, you can have multiple things happen at the same time. So if you're animating at the end of this, you'll see um, one of the character's arms go up. That's four different procedures down here at the bottom, but they're all happening at the same time. So you can set those things to happen at the same point. Uh, one thing I don't like is that, again, you'll see this when I play the video, is that the text bubbles go to the top of the page. I could not figure out how to get those to change. Um, the other thing uh, that was a little bit difficult was if I go back to my scene setup, uh, let me just change this to the top real quick. So I've got one penguin back here. I wanted four or five of them. I did figure out how to get a group of penguins, but I couldn't get them to move the way I wanted them to. So uh, it did not make it entirely clear about how to get an array of things. Um, they called them lists, but again, it was hard to get it to work in the way I needed it to. Um, the other thing that I didn't discover right away is that uh, I had been ignoring the arrows up to the side here. So I was wondering how I can get the penguin's arms to go up if I had to do those individually. Well, these arrows off to the side give you very specific methods for this penguin. So I'm targeting different areas of the model, uh, which is really handy once you figure it out. And I like that I didn't figure it out right away because I think I would have stressed over it. So some of the movements you're going to see are very blocky, and then others of them are more fine-tuned into what... Um, the character is doing. So let's uh, let's take a look. Oh, full screen. Now I could have animated those tent flaps there. Um, I chose not to. But here's that text bubble way up here at the top. Um, I wish those could be shifted a little bit more. So there's some of that motion, and then here's that fine motion again. So that's it. Um, I liked working in a 3D environment. I liked being able to have the sled go up and down, and they've got some nice tools up here to make sure all of your angles are correct. There's arrows that show you what your plane is. Um, but I liked Alice. I liked using it. Uh, I think 
Uh, it was a lot of debugging. <laughs> At first, I had to go and find where the problem areas were, and maybe instead of using um, a move to, I needed to use a move to an orient or something along those lines. So uh, a lot of debugging, but you know, um, setting up algorithms, thinking through, okay, you know, move to, uh, move to, move to, orient, um, a lot of those things, once you get the hang of them, they, they get very easy. You can use a lot of the same elements over and over again. Uh, but if I was teaching students, I, I would probably honestly choose this over Scratch to get them into it, um, mainly because of the depth that it can give. I think kids can, can dive into it. I felt more immersed in the process. Uh, I also felt like some of the tools for setting up the scene, like I mentioned, these camera markers and the object markers that I used for the penguin um, and the walrus, you know, all these here, I, I felt like it helped me get into the process so that my code flowed a little bit better because I, I had already thought through what I wanted them to do. Um, so Atlas 3, it's free, runs great um, on, on Mac or Windows. I think it's also on Linux. So uh, yeah, I would definitely use it again. Uh, great way to start to teach some of these uh, CT skills we've been talking about.